we saw a program where we are finding the minimum of a set of 10 numbers. So, here the program is restricted as you can see to 10 numbers and accordingly I have declared the array A to be of size 10 and also this iteration values are also iteration limit has been kept to 10. Now, when we did that just a quick recapitulation of what we did in the last lecture that here is the array declaration and this is where we are accessing the array elements. Here you can see I am accessing the array element um, a i a particular array element here and assigning that to another variable mean. Now, here is very important how am I reading the element. Now, since an array consists of a number of elements sorry the since the array uh, consists of a number of elements I have to read them in a loop that is a very fundamental thing that you want should understand that at a time I cannot read the entire array in one shot except for the case where I initialize it and uh, when I declare the array. I give int a so and so values within curly bracket that is one way, but if you have to do it at run time that means whenever the you are asking the program is running and you are asking from the user that you enter the values then you have to take one bit of value at a time just like this and store it in the array. So, that has to be done in a loop for by varying this indexes one after another as the index moves I load the different uh, locations with the values. Now, given this we can have an alternate version of the same program. You can see that here we have added one line that is this line define size 10. This is again the use of hash define that we had learnt when we defined pi to be 3 point uh, we had encountered this defined pi 3.14 etcetera etcetera. So, similarly here I am defining size a variable size to have the value 10. Therefore, I now can write this dimension as size. Now, please note that the compiler look at it from the angle of the compiler. The compiler will try to allocate some memory location, some amount of memory location. Okay. Now, if there be a variable size it really does not know how much memory location to allocate, but since I have defined it earlier it now knows okay, size means 10. So, it will replace int size with int size uh, sorry int a size to be int a size 10. Okay. Now, next thing you do is wherever I had i less than 10 I make it size i less than size here also for the for loop I make i is less than size. Why did I do that? What is the advantage of doing it? Now, suppose you have got this program and how many places is size being used? It is being used in 1, 2, 3 places. In another program it could have been used in more number of places. Here we have not printed uh, the array. Okay, I have only printed the minimum. So, there could be more places where size could be used. Now, now suppose I want to modify this program or reuse this program for an array of size 100. Only thing I need to do is I change this 10 to 100 and please note that after define any hash define does not have a semicolon because these are not part of the program these are uh, commands to the compiler or uh, pre-processing commands. Okay. So, 
I, if I could make it 100, then this would be replaced by 100, it would be A 100 and here it should be I less than 100 automatically, I less than 100, I need not uh, change it at all the places. That is the advantage of the hash define. So, we change, we can change only one line to change the problem size. The problem size from 10 to 100 to 1000, we can change by just changing one line. Here is another version of the program. Here we have not defined, uh, has defined, but I have kept um, a large size 100. Now, so I have got an array space of 100 elements, all right, 100 elements. So much space is kept for me. by this line. Now, what I am doing is I am asking from the user, you please tell me how many elements you are going to input. Suppose here and that I am taking as a variable n. n is a variable where I am just asking the user give the number of elements n and when the user is typing say 25 then that goes as n. So, out of now this 25 is of course, less than the size of this which is 100, it is less than that. So, now I will just work not for 100 elements, but for 25 elements. Why? Because the user has already told me that I want to input 25 elements. Therefore, what modification should I do? Again, here I want to make it interactive. So, I again tell the user on the screen you will see this message input all in integers and the user is entering them one after another. Okay. He can type in 25 enter, 35 enter, 42 enter like that or he can give space and go on typing that. So, for I less than 0 to n. Now, what is n? n is 25. So, now it is for i to i 0 to 25, I read the number. So, I will be reading 25 numbers here 5, 20, 16, 12, 9, etcetera, etcetera. I go on and I will go up to 25, not 100 all these. So, this space will be wasted there is a wasted space. Why wasted space? Because I had reserved 100 locations, but the user has just agreed to give only 25 numbers and then the remaining part remains the same. Here also I will be dealing with n. Okay. Why n? I will be searching. So, when I did this, the array that I got is actually although they were 20, 100 elements, the array was actually of 25 elements, right? The array was of 25 elements. So, I will have to find the minimum within this zone and I need not go here. Okay? So, that is another version of the same program. So, here what is done is we define an array of larger size and only use the required num required uh, amount out of that all right now let us uh, do a programming ourselves suppose i want to read the some integers and i want to find out the sum of all the integers that old example that we had done earlier how did we do it earlier let's recall we did, um, let me write it in this way, sum, it was something like sum assigned 0, then printf f 
enter the number then scan f percentage d and num sum equals sum plus num and then this has to be done in a loop okay so what how can i make a loop out of this so i also read another variable uh, uh, the number of numbers so some n was read here so i had done some scan f or say let's say of 10 numbers so i need not scan f so this thing i have to loop right this part i have to loop how long so what should i put here at the beginning for doing the loop for i since i know beforehand that there are 10 numbers i assign 0 i less than 10 i plus plus then i put a parenthesis here and a parenthesis here so the for statement comes here okay confusing should i write it again or is it clear so i can write for i assign 0 i less than 10 i plus plus print f please enter the number backslash n then here i had done sum assign 0 scan f percentage d and num sum assign sum plus num that's how the loop will go on but here i am not remembering the number okay so what i can do using an array what i can do is let me now do it using an array int num say 10 comma i is another integer variable now and also i need sum sorry uh, sum is also another integer sum now i'll first read the array so first is reading the array so let me put a comment read the numbers all the numbers earlier you see the scan f every time i was doing scan f I was reading the number here I am reading the numbers and storing them so what should I do for i 0 to i less than 10 i plus plus let's increment the array what am I doing print f enter number backslash n scan f now what should i do i am reading an integer so percentage d and ampere sand what should it be what am i reading first here is an array whose name is num so, what is the first thing that I will be reading? 
first thing that I will be reading is num 0 this element. So, scan f percentage d and num i. Why i? Because i is the index and I can see that initially i is 0. So, whatever is being scanned will be stored here. Then I will go back in this loop, then the next one will be stored, then the next one will be stored in this way the entire array will be stored. After that I am trying to find the sum. So, now add the next part that I do is add the elements. Okay. Now, in this here I will have to again add the elements. So, the suppose the suppose the uh, array that has been formed has got some elements like say 5, 7, 13, 12, 14, 15, 16, 6, so and so forth. So, this I have to add this with this then I will get a sum and with that 12 I will be adding 13. So, I will be getting 25 then 25 and 12 37 in that way I will go on. So, here I initialize sum to be 0 and then for again I assign the same index I can use I could have used other index also I less than 10 sorry i plus plus I hope you remember that after each of these we put a semicolon right in for loop sum assigned sum plus num i. So, what will happen? Sum was 0. Okay. Sum is 0. First, in the first iteration of the loop, what will happen? I take my value of i is 0. So, num i will be taken. And what is num i? the first element of the num array. So, that is 5 sum plus 5. So, sum will be 5 now. Next I go back here i becomes 1. So, I come to the second element and I add that with sum. So, sum becomes 12 automatically I go there I take the index is updated i is being updated here. So, I take the third element and add with sum. So, it becomes 25 and in this way I go on adding them all the elements in an array. So, the same thing I could do using, but in this case what is the advantage that I am getting? I have got I have not forgotten the numbers that I have read. So, I can do that and again um, I can print uh, all these numbers. I can say now the sum of these numbers is so much. So, that is how we can use an array. Now, suppose I had I had to find the average of uh, the elements. What should I do? I have got the sum here and then find average what should I do here? Here of course, I will need another variable average and so I can say and uh, average is sum divided by 10. There is a mistake that is there. Um, what is the mistake? Can you find out? 
here okay i found sum that's okay and then i am finding the average and why am why, while i am finding the average i am dividing sum whatever sum i got here by the number of elements which is 10 i knew beforehand that these are 10 elements where is the error where is the mistake the mistake is that the average cannot be need not be an integer right suppose my sum was 25 and i divide by 10 so it will be 2.5 therefore this average should not be kept here i should have declared it as a float average and not with the int right so you must be very careful about it so this is how what we have shown here is how we can read an array and how we can use an array so let's look at this example of computing the grade point average of the students let us try to understand what this program does we have defined uh, a variable n sub to be 6 this n sub means number of subjects all right now there are six subjects so 0 1 subject 0 subject 1 subject 2 subject 3 subject 4 subject 5 now for each of them we are taking a grade point which is nothing but a mark say um, an integer 3 or 5 or 6 whatever for every how many 6 here you see I have used define so this line essentially means grade point 6 for 6 subjects and credit for each subject. So, suppose I have got the subject and the grade point and each subject has got a credit. and I have got 6 subjects. So, subject 0 has got a grade point, he has got a grade point of 3, maybe he has got a B grade or whatever and the credit that means the importance of that subject is 5. Um, subject 1, he has got a grade point of 5, he did really well here and the credit of that was also 5. There was another subject 2 in which his grade pen point was 4 and the credit of that subject was 4 that is the importance weightage. The subject 3 he got 5 and the credit was 3 like that okay. and since we have got 6 subjects let us uh, do that. Subject 4 his credit he got 3 and the importance was 4 and this one he got 5 out of 5 and the credit was again 4. Now, the credit point is the grade point is computed here as for each of them we will multiply the grade point with the credit. So, it will be 3 times 5 that means 15 plus 5 times 5 that is 25 plus 4 times 4 that is 16, then 15, then 12, then 20 and all these are added up. So, 40, 56, 66, 71 and 12, 71 and 12 is um, 83 and 20. So, he got 103 points and how many credits were there? 5, 5, 10, 10 and 7, 17 and 8, 25. So, his grade point average GPA will be when I divide this by 25, his thing will be 4.5. 
4 point something 4 point 1 uh, etcetera. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 4.15 or something like that. So, this is what I want to compute. Therefore, what I need is uh, to find out uh, that I have to find the sigma of the sum of the credit for a course i times the grade point of that course i. I will do it for all the courses and then the whole thing should be divided by the total number of credits. Okay. Total number of credits. Now, let us see how we have done we can do this program. Here we can find that the grade point for 6 and credit for 6 and there is i. The grade point sum, so I have to do this sum is 0, credit sum is 0 and I have to find out a GPA. So, what I am asking from the user here input grade points and credits for the 6 subjects. So, where are those being stored? Those are, those are being stored in 2 different arrays. Here is the grade point array this thing and there is another credit array. 6 subjects So, I read for each of the subjects i less than i 0 to n sub, I read the grade point say 3 and the credit for that subject say 4. And again I go and store the grade point of that subject, grade point that has been obtained is 5 and say credit is 3. In that way I go on filling up reading 2 arrays. So, here I am reading 2 arrays you see here I am reading 2 arrays in one scanf statement and through one for loop through one for loop I am filling up these 2 arrays. So, the reading part is complete here. Next I come to the computation grade point sum will be you now know what is meant by this. This means grade point sum is equal to grade point sum plus grade point i times credit i. So, it is g p sum is whatever is the g p sum initially g p sum was made 0 g p sum plus grade point i times the credit of i and that has to be done in a loop just as we had added uh, the elements of an array. So, and credit sum also I am also finding out the credit sum, the credit sum was 0. So, whatever the credits are I am also adding them. So, by adding this array I am getting the total number of credits here and here I am getting the grade point sum. Now, the grade point sum is grade point average is grade point sum by credit sum and then I pre print out the GPA. So, please try to understand this part. What I am trying to do is sigma grade point i times credit i divided by sigma of credit i. So, the sigma of credit i is being computed here. This is computing sigma of credit i why? Because this is being done in a loop and here I am doing this part sigma of grade point of i times credit i and adding that with grade point sum. So, this is a very useful program which illustrates a number of things and in the assignments you will be given more number of programs to do which will give you a very good practice.